Life Audio. Welcome to the Crosswalk Devotional. We're so glad to have you as a listener. Today's topic is keeping the finish line in sight. We'll be right back with a brief message from our sponsor. Need a new roof for your home or even just some repairs? That's a big investment, one that you should take very seriously. And you want the job done right by professionals and at a great price. You need to call your hometown roofing contractor. Serving Northeast Ohio for over 65 years. Coates Bros Roofing, 440-322-1343. How have they been in the roofing business for so long? Quality work at a great price. They keep their promises and communicate with you, the homeowner. Coates Bros Roofing will listen to you and find solutions that will accommodate your roofing needs. They'll give you a better than competitive price on your roofing job and make sure that it fits within your budget. Financing is available too. The highest quality at a great price. Coates Bros Roofing. Call 440-322-1343 or go to CoatesBrosRoofing.com. That's C-O-A-T-E-S. CoatesBrosRoofing.com. The United States Constitution guarantees every American fundamental rights and protection of life, liberty, and property. Salem is celebrating our founding document with a special offer, a 1953 Omen U.S. Constitution lithograph. To understand the value of these lithographs is to know the story. A master lithographer immigrant named Theodore Omen came to this country to find the American dream. Seventy years ago, in 1953, Omen printed a limited number of these exceptional Constitution lithographs. Go to Salem Events Store com to read Omen's entire story. America's most important document stands as a testament to all Americans to maintain their liberties, freedoms, and inalienable rights. Buy it and display it proudly. Buy a gift for your family and friends and for all the teachers in your communities. There is a limited number, so act today. Go to SalemEventsStore.com to get your exclusive 1953 Omen U.S. Constitution lithograph while supplies last. That's SalemEventsStore.com. Keeping the Finish Line in Sight, written by Laura Bailey, read by Laura Bailey. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, NIV. In college, a friend convinced me it would be a good idea to sign up for a half marathon. Since I was not a runner, I spouted off various reasons why I wouldn't be able to join her. Mainly, it was the time commitment that turned me off. I eventually succumbed to her persistent request and dedicated myself to training and preparing for race day. The training alone required numerous hours a week, and then there was the actual race, which would take up an entire weekend. Standing at the finish line, my friend chuckled, I can't believe we're here. No matter what happens, let's promise to finish this race. I'm all in. There's nothing that is going to stop me from crossing that line, I smiled back. And all went well until mile 12. We only had 1.1 miles to go, but my friend pulled her hamstring and wanted to stop. I knew she was in severe pain, but she couldn't give up when we were close. I think about that day often. It was my go-to story for years when someone asked if I've experienced something difficult. 20 years later, it is a faint memory, overshadowed by experiences and more complex circumstances. An aching muscle seems like a poor illustration these days when I've seen friends face divorce because of an affair, or when someone I love is dealing with the death of a loved one, or when I'm navigating relational tension in my own family. The New Testament often likens the Christian life to a race, requiring training, dedication, focus, and perseverance to keep going in all circumstances. We also read in Scripture that we will experience trials and tribulations, 
and a cost associated with a life fully surrendered to Christ. Luke 9, 57 through 62. I think about how much sacrifice is for the race. I traded my college diet for healthier options. I declined invitations for late night outings because my body needed sleep. Countless times I wanted to hit the snooze button. I've since retired from my marathon schedule. Still, every day is a chance to surrender my desires and make sacrifices to finish my race and keep my faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. The choice is to get up early and attend corporate worship or catch some extra sleep. The budget gets tight and the choice arises to tithe and help others or to skimp on honoring God with our resources. Many sacrifices will be made. Each is a training ground ensuring we finish this race with endurance. Someone says something offensive and the opportunity to forgive or hold a grudge comes up. Will I love the unlovable more than myself? The good news is that God doesn't require sacrifice without extending great rewards. In Matthew 5, 11 through 12, we are encouraged that our great reward is in heaven. Peter tells those who belong to God have an eternal inheritance in Christ that never spoils or fade. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 6. After this race is over and we finish strong, we get perfect communion with God and his people with no trace of sin. What an amazing trade-off for our time spent training. My friend finished her race, albeit significantly slower than she'd hoped. Her hobble across the finish line wasn't photo worthy, but she completed the course and the hours of training and sacrifices were well worth it. Remember that this life is a race today, especially if you're currently running the most challenging mile and feel unsure if you can keep going. Maybe you're not sprinting on this stretch like the people around you. That's okay. Stay focused on Christ and keep putting one foot in front of the other. We can trust that as we make choices to sacrifice and persevere, our character and endurance have the opportunity to grow. And when we cross that finish line, we will finally be rewarded with words we long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, 23. Intersecting faith and life. Take some time today to pray, asking him to help you stay faithful and persevere your Christian walk. Ask yourself, If your current habits align with training to run a spiritual race, are you nourishing yourself by reading God's word? Do you have accountability such as in a small group? Are you being refreshed and replenished by worshiping at a local church gathering? These few habits can give you the spiritual boost you may need to finish strong. For further reading, read How to Finish the Race Well or 2 Timothy 4.7. The Crosswalk Devotional is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com.